Hello, my name is Ben Walker and with the help of Promise Yourself, I'm here today to talk to you about all the things that we're just not taught about at school. Now these can be really important things from mortgages and all these different finances, uh, renting, buying a house, buying your first house is very, very important, obviously, and then all the way over to debt and taxes and all that kind of stuff at the other end. So today I'm talking about budgeting. Now, in my opinion, budgeting should, it's a staple of a healthy life. So it should be talked about in the same breath as, you know, going out for fresh air, regular exercise, or just looking both ways before you cross a road. It's something that people should do. Whether or not we do it, that's another matter, but it's something that everyone should do just to keep track of where your money goes, because it can be very interesting to actually see where your money ends up going. Now, obviously budgeting isn't the easiest thing to do in the world. It does take quite a lot of restraint not to think, ooh, shiny thing, I wanna buy it. Uh, that's one thing that my brother's always suffered with. He sees shiny things and instantly buys. So it's something that people need to work on. It's not gonna come naturally. Um, but there are a few steps that could help you out. Now, the first step is separating how much you earn and then what your costs are. So you have your income, which can be from wages or investments or from anything else, and it has to be post-tax income because if it's pre-tax, then that's not gonna be a true representation of how much money you have. So post-tax income, your essential costs and your non-essential costs. So essential costs are things like buying yourself some food, paying rent, um, heating and electricity and gas and water, all the things you actually can't live without. Now your non-essential costs are your luxuries, so uh, subscription services, gyms, all that kind of stuff, even eating out at restaurants you don't have to do because it's much cheaper to cook in at your own house, so maybe it's time to learn how to cook too. Now you have to separate each of these sections so you know exactly how much you're spending on each per month. And that way you'll be able to then put them into a nice graph uh, which is below and uh, you can actually figure out, see how much you're spending and figure out how much money you have left over. Now the final section is savings. Now this is obviously what we want to do. We want to save as much money as possible or just set yourself a realistic target. Now this brings us on to the second step. Once you've realized how much money you earn and how much money you're spending, you can figure out where you need to cut back or if you're already under budget, great, you can figure out how much you can save. This is where your little saving box comes in. Now, generally, now there's, there's so many different techniques, I guess, to budgeting. There's all these different people who say, use this method, no, use this one. The one you use is completely up to you. Um, I can't advocate for any one or the other, but the one that I use personally is 20%. At the end of your month, 20% of your income should be put aside and saved for a rainy day. So if you make 1,000 pounds a month, 200 pounds you put aside and save. Now, of course, if you've got really, really high essential costs, for example, if you're living in London and the rent's insanely high, then you may not be able to do this. But even if you can't save, it's still valuable to know exactly where your money's going and exactly where you can cut back. So it's still an exercise worth doing just to keep track of your finances. But like I said, that 20% rule does tend to work for me anyway. Now, the third step is actually putting it into action, which is a lot easier said than done. Like I said earlier, we have a nice table here on this guide that can help you just fill in all those slots and uh, you'll be able to easily see where your money's going and how much you have left over. Of course, you can make your own table and add in whatever slots you need, depending on what you buy or don't buy. So you can make your own table, set up a spreadsheet, and that way you can really keep track of what's going on. But the whole aim of this is to save. That is the whole reason people budget. When you do budget and you have some savings left over, that's not an excuse to just treat yourself to anything you want. You wanna set that aside so that way you can start saving for a mortgage or you can buy a new car in a few years time. It's all about setting yourself reasonable, attainable goals. So for your first year budgeting, you can think, right, what can I do? I earn a thousand pounds a month, but I've got quite high essential costs. 
So I could probably save a hundred pounds a month. If that's the case, at the end of the year, you can have 1,200 pounds. That's not bad. You can put that aside. If you put it into a savings account, then great. You're gonna start earning interest on that money as well. Start earning more money on that. Um, so the more you save, the more you're going to earn if you put it into account as well, or you can invest it. It's completely up to you what you do with that money, of course. Um, but saving, you want to save. Now, if you realize that you can't actually save and you just don't have the money to do that because maybe you're unemployed at the moment, or maybe, like I said, your rent's too high, that's okay. Still keep budgeting still keep working towards an attainable goal. If you're in debt, then just say, I'm going to pay off this amount of debt. That way, by setting yourself goals, you're more likely to follow the plan. You, want to, you need this to become a thing you do religiously. You want to keep up with it, and that is such a good habit to have as well. If you do budget, chances are you're gonna end up in a much better position than you are if you didn't budget. So, no one can tell you how to budget. No one can tell you what method to use. No one can tell you how much money to save. That's completely up to you. If I were you, I would do some research, have a look into it, see what different types there are, and that way you can get a good handle of what you can afford to do and which one would work best for you. But my name's been Ben Walker. Hopefully you've learned something in this video today, and I'll see you guys again soon.